Vultures are not like any other bird species. They play a critical role in the balance of nature. Without them, our entire ecosystem could collapse. But they are dying out at an alarming rate. We need to conserve them because they're carrying us under their wings. And Kerry Walter is determined to save them, one bird at a time. It's the most amazing thing, you know, being able to give a bird its life back. somebody would they choose vultures as a career not many people are going to say yes they're not they're not perceived to be these incredibly charismatic or cuddly birds but when they're when they're chicks they're exactly that I, I had the privilege of hand raising this little guy and called him Percy and that was was the changing point from the minute I got him to this day, he, he is my little boy. And I honestly believe from that moment on that the species chose me as, as their spokesperson, if you want to call it, just somebody who, who gets them, who understands. And my entire life now revolves around vultures because of him. It's the most amazing thing, you know, being able to give a bird its life back. I run an organization called VOLPRO, which stands for Vulture Program. And basically it is um, all about vulture conservation and doing anything that we possibly can to the best of our ability to try and protect vulture species. Vultures are a critically important part of a healthy ecosystem, but their numbers are dwindling. Kerry and her team take in vultures that are sick or injured and attempt to rehabilitate them and put them back into the wild. Every bird plays a role in the survival of the species. Even Percy has a job. Percy's still here today. In fact, he's, he's not part of the breeding program, so he's retired as an educational bird. He's got a mate. Um, I can't handle him anymore. He now knows he's a vulture. That is Percy over there with a the massive crop. I mean, you can see how much food he has in there. He probably eats more than any of the other birds around here. See, Percy can't fly at all. He's too fat. Kerry is lucky to have a very dedicated team, like Nlu Nsukani, who studied wildlife management in Zimbabwe and is passionate about his job. Conservation of vultures is very important to everyone in this whole world because vultures play a pivotal role within our ecosystem. The key role that vultures play is to clean the environment. Now, without a clean environment, Basically, we cannot survive because we'll all die of diseases, we'll all die of unsanitary conditions. But by virtue that they are there and they're doing all the cleaning up, they're eating away all the animals that are dying, they're eating up everything that we really would consider dirty. So basically, they are very important. We need to conserve them because they're carrying us under their wings. A typical day in um my life. Well, it starts off early in the morning, bright and early, going for a run with the five dogs. I do try and horse ride, um, either first thing in the morning after my run or in the evenings, depending on the weather or whether we're called out to collect vultures or anything like that.
Conservation work is a full-time job and it's not always possible to have a life away from the sanctuary. So it's lucky for Kerry that her fiancé Walter is also passionate about vulture conservation. I would do this job even if I wasn't getting paid. Uh, I've been here for three years now and I wouldn't have it any other way. This is what I want to do with, uh, with the rest of my life. Definitely needs a strap on the right way. Our days depend on the season. So for example, this time of year with our rehab, my phone's on 24 seven and we can be give, uh, called out to go and collect an injured vulture any time through, you know, throughout the day, even night. So if we're always on standby. Kerry is constantly receiving new vultures at the sanctuary. Some have been poisoned by humans or harmful farming chemicals. Others have broken their wings by flying into power lines and are severely dehydrated and malnourished. All of them need specialized medical care, nutrition and rehabilitation before they can be released back into the wild. Apart from the rehabilitation work, there's also a lot of office work involved in the running of a successful conservation project. We do a lot of computer work. You're responsible for report writing, communicating with your sponsors, marketing, website updates. You've got to keep the interest going. And I also always like ending the day taking my dogs for a walk. And again, at night, you continue working on your computer and stuff like that. So days are very varied. The selfish reasons for me to be involved with vulture conservation is, is because I really enjoy it myself and I really like the birds and I'd like to have them around for the rest of my life. One of my favorite things is getting to spend time with, with birds, so when I have a, a moment then I would probably just go down, sit down with them and, uh, and observe what they're doing and uh, sometimes interact with them. It's a real passion for me. I've always been absolutely fascinated by vultures and the way they fly. Some of the cases at the sanctuary have very unusual stories, like this bird that was attacked by a swarm of bees and needed an operation to save his life. We managed to pick out 220 stings. And what you can see around his head is the skin is starting to die off. So wherever there was a sting, the skin is dying off. Um, it's been two weeks now. He theoretically should be dead. But he's doing okay. It's a miracle bird, this. Nobody thought he would survive. You try not to get emotionally attached to the birds, but there are very specific cases that you can't help. And you do, you cry, but you do it because you want to see the birds fly free. Sometimes Kerry still gets a rare opportunity to hand raise a baby vulture, like she did with Percy. Her latest orphan, Bonnie, arrived at the sanctuary as an unhatched egg. Bonnie is now five months old and fully grown, but she can never be released because she's human imprinted. Come, baby. The, the, the reasons for Bonnie's training is that uh, she is a bird that's going to be in captivity for the rest of her life. So you can make things more interesting and exciting for her so that she's not bored and sitting in a cage her whole life. And that gives us the opportunity to have a bird to work with which is very useful for education and giving people the opportunity to interact with a vulture. So what we do is we use food as an incentive, just get, so this is her meal, we just use it just to play with her basically, I mean that's all it is. Okay. It's not hard to train a bird, it just takes a lot of time. One doesn't train them to do things that they don't naturally do anyway, so it's just getting them to know what it is that you want from them and that just takes a lot of time and dedication. <laughs> She hasn't flown yet, so that's the next step. But we want to put a tracking device on, so before we go outside in the field, 
We just need a tracking device in case she does take off. Come. Get baby girl. Get me. Get me. Get me. Good girl. I never really had an inkling, to be honest, with birds. I had absolutely no appreciation for them. My love was mammals, dogs, horses. Those were my favorite pets. I lived, slept, breathed horses. And my dad, he sent me to do a secretarial diploma. Then I did business computing and I did a whole bunch of things because the longer I studied, the longer my dad would pay for my horse. I grew up my entire life in Joburg and the contrast was huge. And I always felt really caged in. I hated the feeling of having to lock your doors, lock everything, you know, make sure as you drive in the car your gates closed and whatnot. So the first chance I could get, I moved out of the city into the country. Kerry's passion for animals led her to seek the advice of Professor Harold Fedwin from the Endangered Wildlife Trust, who had been involved in vulture conservation for 25 years. I met Kerry. Um, about 10 or 12 years ago when she came to the Endangered Wildlife Trust uh, looking for a job in conservation. She was very passionate about this. And I gave an opportunity, appointed her as Lord, sort of an administrative manager of the Vulture Study Group and the Raptor Conservation Group. And within a short period of time, she got interested in the sort of hands and work in the vultures. She started learning about them, started studying about them. And she became quite a proficient person in this arena of vulture conservation to the point I think six or seven years after she started working for us at ELBT she was good enough with the knowledge and a hands-on experience to take over the whole vulture conservation story and I was happy to give it over to her. I'm really proud of what I've achieved you know establishing Volpro and the biggest compliment I got by uh, the late Professor Stephen Piper, who was in his time the vulture expert, when he stopped me a couple of years back and he said, Kerry, you finally have found your calling. And that was a major breakthrough, I thought, for me. We're having these, these vulture experts starting to recognize me as actually having a contribution. Six years into her project, Kerry has already made huge strides towards protecting the species. Volpro is the only approved vulture conservation project in South Africa and now even has its own board of directors. Since the start of the project, Kerry has helped 268 vultures at the sanctuary, but she still has plenty of work to do. Today, more than ever, vultures are at risk from human encroachment and loss of habitat. With urbanization and with the increase in, in human population globally, there's a high demand for electricity. And your power lines are a huge threat for, for vultures. We sit now in modern days with electricity network that is basically a death trap for vultures. All around the country there are electricity utility structures that will either electrocute them or they will fly into them and break their wings. So that's uh, one of the biggest traps of vultures in the world. This war that you are fighting against the destruction of natural habitats, the truth is many people don't know how nice vultures are. Because out there many people live in cities, uh, they are surrounded by buildings, so nature to them is something that they see in a zoo or something that they see on TV. But it would be good if we were to try and do our best to make sure that each and every child who is born today knows each and everything about a vulture. The world would be a better place. If we don't have any vultures in the ecology, it will wipe out everything on, on Earth. A big part of Kerry's work is research and she's pioneering new ways of collecting critical data that would help to understand and protect vulture populations in the future. A lot of people are starting to copy us, what we're doing, where, you know, we started putting tracking devices on and everyone's now wanting to put tracking devices on. So we've made huge headway for, for vulture conservation. There's still a long road to, to go, but it's an incredible place to be and to be a part of that and to see 
people now recognize vultures and want to participate in vulture conservation. I mean, that in itself is a huge achievement. The, the most important information that we're getting back from the tracking device on the captive bred bird is where it is and if it's alive. So that if something goes wrong with it, we could head out and rescue it. Secondary to that, we can tell whether its behavior is similar to the wild birds and if it is going to in fact survive on the long term in the wild. Because he's a captive bred bird, we'd rather not chase him away, we're just going to put him down, back off and hopefully he sticks around. We don't want him to go and sit on any power lines or anything. Okay, buddy. Here we go. His parents are in that other enclosure, so maybe he'll walk and visit them. Oh man. We, we plot the tracking data on a map. These birds will move up to four or 500 kilometers in a day in the exceptional cases, especially the young birds will cover uh, large distances and uh, explore. Uh, this particular bird has been in uh, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Botswana, South Africa, Lesotho. This is over a period of six months and he's still probably going to go more places in his life. an ideal example of a young person coming in, developing an interest and a passion, developing the skills and knowledge and the hands-on experience to start taking it over. So I'm very proud that there are some people like that, that have the passion, that have developed the skills, can continue with the work because we need more and more and more of that, because the vultures need that for the next hundred years. We've gone from just a rehab facility to a rehab facility, a research facility, an educational facility. We can go out there and educate each and every child that is born. So at the end of the day, they know each and everything about vultures. We can do this through workshops. We can do this through educational campaigns. We can even do this through TV or radio because the whole point is to give them knowledge that shall have a positive and effective impact on them. What we try and do with education is we try and get kids to come to the center once a week or we try and go to them depending on the schools or the communities involved whether they're financially able to or not. This particular group is a holiday program. So you're going to see four different vulture species and Lou's going to teach you all about vulture conservation, why we need to protect them and how you guys can help protect the birds as well. Now, this guy is a very serious guy, okay? Yes. What do you think gives it the name Lappet Face Vulture? There's something that some people invented some time ago. It's called the raising your hands. Let's, let's just try it out. It's a fun exercise, raising your hands. This is what we call the Lappet. Now, because it has got the Lappet, therefore we call it a Lappet Face Vulture, okay? The parents are working, so the kids are put into a holiday program, and they range from seven years up until 18-year-olds. So it's a nice range of kids, and every day we've had about 60-odd kids present. Now what you ladies and gentlemen are looking at here today is called a giant eagle owl. Its eyelids are pink, for all you ladies who love pink. I'm going to teach you the vulture dance. For starters, we're going to open up our hands. 
to represent our wings. We are going to flap five times. You are going to bring your hands to your chest. Okay. You are going to take your hands up to the center. All right. You are going to bring them back to your chest. Then you are going to twist. Let's go down. Ah, up. Let's go. Nice. Oh, come on, guys. Shake it. <laughs> nice. Let's do it again, eh? One, two, three. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Up. To the left. To the right. Head. Let's get. Let's go. Come on, come on. If you work with kids, you experience the greatest joy that you can ever feel in this world because you are being uh, given uh, the future to say, here is our future, take care of it, make sure that it's educated. I mean, that's the best job that can ever happen to a person. You know, so I really enjoy working with kids. They're lovely. Kerry, Walter and Malou work tirelessly to give injured vultures another chance at life. Their best reward is when a vulture is strong and healthy enough to be released. These two have been in rehab for a little while now. They came from the Bloberg Nature Reserve and they've now recovered and they're fine to go back out into the wild. Inside I feel very happy when a vulture is released because it's like giving the individual a second chance at life and that's really a great joy but at the same time I do feel a little bit worried because I don't know whether this bird is going to find food by the end of the day or is going to be alive in a year's time so it's like it's like I'm a father I'm worried about my child who's just left home. We're doing a soft release and basically a soft release is we don't want to frighten the birds away where they kind of get frightened and fly off and maybe you know, they end up landing in somewhere where it's not as safe. Where here, if they're not forced to fly away and they can stay around for a couple of days, <laughs> then it's a lot safer for them. <laughs> um, so we rather, you know, let them stay here and let them finally go off to wherever they want to when they feel 100% ready to. most amazing feeling so I'm past the stage of crying it's just every release is unique you never get tired of it it's just incredible it's coming back that's quite cool it's coming straight back to us <laughs> although he didn't go and join the thermal it's fine he'll come this evening or later half an hour an hour's time probably sit on the enclosure just like that bird over there that we released uh, two weeks back and that's what we, that's the soft release, that's ideal, where they stay here, we put food down at the restaurant, they have the captive birds which they've built up relationships with, so until they're ready to disperse, I mean that bird under the tree, there's also a release bird from a few weeks back, I mean, you want to make this a safe haven for them, you know, they can go when they want to, they can come back when they want to, that's the ideal. Malou might worry about these birds leaving the safety of the sanctuary, but he has a unique way of finding humor in his job. What I enjoy most about my job is interacting with these birds. You get to learn something new from them each and every day. They get to whisper in your ear something nice, or they can even tell you a joke. I've actually you know, experienced a few jokes from them, but that's really the nice part about this whole job, you know. One of the jokes that they've told me is, who do you think is more intelligent between a vulture and a human being? 
And I went on to say, I think it's a human being. They said, no, 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 no. If human beings were intelligent, they would have conserved us. So I think that's a really interesting joke coming from a vulture. <laughs> Apart from the vultures, the sanctuary also offers a safe place for other birds of prey who need care and attention. This isn't a vulture. This is a butterly eagle or a short-tailed eagle. And particularly this guy is my favorite, favorite bird in this whole place. In the whole world anyway. I call him Riley. That's an Irish name for a brave one, courageous one, because he was very brave to allow me to come to him. So I gave him the name Riley, but his nickname is Buds. And I love calling him using his nickname. You know, it's, it's an affection name between the two of us. <laughs> Does love it. This has taken me months to achieve. Takes time. Takes time. Like Malou says, conservation work takes time. It's a 24-7 mission to save a species. But Walter has found the ultimate way to show Kerry the rewards of her hard work by joining her beloved vultures in their flight to freedom. I was given a massive opportunity to, to go paragliding with, with the vultures. I'm terrified of heights and this crazy guy by the name of Walter Nessa contacted me on Facebook, believe it or not, and asked if I wanted to go paragliding. I didn't even know what paragliding was, so I had to Google it first. And of course when I realized you've got to jump off a mountain with a complete stranger, I thought he was completely insane. I was aware of Kerry doing, um, doing work on vultures. We had mutual friends on Facebook and that kind of thing. And uh, I was spending some time up in an area getting the opportunity to fly with these birds sometimes. So I, uh, I invited her along thinking that she would really appreciate that opportunity. Uh, it's not something that just anybody gets to do. He, I think, reluctantly uh, decided to do it. But anyway, I jumped off a mountain with him and I was petrified, absolutely petrified. And I think I just went dead quiet when we were up in the sky. It was the most incredible experience. You join them and you're just another friend. So you start thermaling and they start thermaling with you and you change direction and they change with you. And it's a whole big happy family out there. It's definitely a different perspective of seeing these birds and flying with them. And you, you get to actually learn how they fly, how they stay up, how they use thermals. Um, but not only that, how they communicate with each other and how they perceive you in the air as well. You know, you, you don't have a motor, you're quiet, you thermal as they thermal, and they don't see you as a threat. To watch the fledglings fly off for the first time and join you and the adults, and it's just, it is the most awe-inspiring thing a person can ever do, you know. you actually joining them in their territory. It's just incredibly peaceful. For me, that's probably as natural and as close to heaven, if you want to call it, as you possibly can get to.